Hi, this is Crafting with Kathy with a Christmas theme. Today's technique I call black on black. So we're calling this one black on black bauble. So the black on black is that we are using a black embossing powder on black card, which sounds like, well, why would you do that? But then when you color it in, it looks magnificent. So this is gonna be lots of fun. We're gonna be using some perfect pearls and creating backgrounds as well as painting them and using some of our gorgeous Christmas stamps. So let's have a look at our stamps that we'll be using today. We've got the bauble diamond, We've got a vertical Merry Christmas, which is really useful. And then a bit out of, not quite Christmassy, but I'm going to use some Desiderata text to create some background. Okay, we'll also be using the Versamark ink and the Perfect Pearls. The colors I'm using are the ones that we package together as a soft colors or pastel colors set. So we've got the newer colors of Iris, Zinnia, Blue Hydrangea, Poppy, and they've teamed that with a bit of the Sunflower Sparkle. Haven't decided yet if I'm actually going to use Sunflower Sparkle on this card or not, because it's quite a, it is a bolder gold. We'll see how we go. So with the Perfect Pearls colours, they actually have a, uh, a paint medium in them. So you don't have to seal them. You can just paint with them and they'll just dry and stay. On light coloured or white or light coloured cardstock, so for the four colours that I'm planning on using, which is the Zinnia, Poppy, Blue Hydrangea and the Iris, they actually, oh, this Kometi getting quite close. On white card, they're, they're there, but it's a little bit boring. So here, I've actually mixed them with some of the Catherine Pooler inks. So we've mixed Zinnia with the Catherine Pooler grass skirt. Here it's been mixed with Rocking Red, uh, Fiesta Blue, and uh, Be Mine, a pink shade. So you can see that it just makes the pearls look so much better by adding a little bit of ink to them. And for your inks, it gives your inks a lovely metallic shine. So the two work really well together. But once we get to dark cardstock, this is our colors again on the dark cardstock. And you can see how just the pearls themselves show up beautifully. When I've mixed them with the inks, it actually doesn't make a lot of difference. So we can just use the pearls directly. But you can just see how much dif more, how different it is on black cardstock to on the light colored cardstock. So you're starting to get an inkling now of how magic it's gonna be. So let's first create our main piece. So I've got, oh, and my bit of black card. So what I'm using for our base card and our card is black leather grain cardstock. So when we're doing our base card, it's got a little bit of lovely leather grain texture to it. Not sure if we can actually see the texture there. There we go. But I don't want that texture for stamping onto. So what I can do is flip the card over to its smooth side, but rather than using a different type of black card, which means then our blacks might look different, by just flipping this over, I get a smooth size to stamp on, but it's gonna look the same as our underlying black card. That'll make sense as we keep going. Okay, so let's get our stamp and our black embossing powder. I will give it a wipe over with our anti-static pad. And we'll ink up with our Versamark ink. So tap it over your stamp. Make sure you get plenty on. And then I'm gonna stamp this, oh, I just touched that. So I'm just gonna go back over that a bit more with the Versamark. Now lining it up in the center of my black panel. Press down nice and firmly so I know I've covered the whole area. It's quite a detailed stamp, this one. So I really want to get all the pattern there happening. Okay, lift up, pop it into our black powder. Now I'm just going to shake that over it. We'll get our brush and give it a tap on the side. Good tap on the back. And just double check We've got a few extra grains there down the bottom and just a couple of odd ones around. It looks pretty good though. The anti-static pad did its job. Just a bit more of a tap, okay. Now I'm gonna pop my powder well to the side before I get my heat gun out. And I'll cover up my Versamark ink pad. So let's get some heating happening. Just warm the heat gun up a little bit first and off we go. So even though it's a black powder on black card, 
because it's got such a good shine to it, it still shows. It's a very elegant look. Okay. Now, I've put my Perfect Pearls onto an acrylic block here. Not much to start with, I can always add a bit more, but usually you don't need a lot. And we're going to start painting. And I've got no idea what colours I'm going to do where or what pattern. I'm just going to make it up as I go along. Okay, so picking up, let's start with some green, the zinnia. So it's just very quick water colouring. I might take it up. I don't want it to be all in line, so I'm going to take this one up the side a little bit. Give my brush a clean on my scrap pad and then I'll pick up some of the blue hydrangea. So sometimes I'm just mixing it a little bit with the water with the powder before I start painting. You can also use the colours just, if I was to give that a tap, I could just open the lid and just pick up a bit of colour in the lid. But then you've got to wait for the lid to dry before you put it back on because you don't want to introduce moisture back into the pot. So it's often easier just to put a little bit uh, on a spatula and lift it out of the pot and put it onto a palette. Okay, now let's bring that over and blend it in with that zinnia on that side. I'll pop the colour on. I'm just going to give my brush a clean and then just wiggle a bit of a line between the two colours just to get them blending beautifully in together. And now let's, with the hydrangea, take it further up the side. Again, so we're not creating uh, straight lines across the card. What should we have next? Let's have some of the iris, which is a pinky mauvey shade. Place that where we want it. Now I could be actually picking out quite um, fine areas. We've done this technique on some of our mandalas and it looks really good to actually pick out specific areas with the different colours. But something like this I find looks good just doing um, bigger areas rather than picking out small spaces. Did that make sense? I hope it did. Going back to a little bit of blue hydrangea just to blend a bit in with the zinnia there. Not the zinnia, the um, iris. And now let's pop some poppy up the top. Again, just go over the two to blend them a little bit. And I have decided I'm going to add some sunflower sparkle in because I think we need some at the top and the bottom of the bauble. So with my sunflower sparkle, I'm only going to be picking up a small amount. So I will just use it off the lid. And I'm going to use my very fine water brush. So just picking up, I'll tilt that up to the camera so you can see it. Just picking up a little bit off the lid there. And we'll just colour in top of the bauble and that little I want a bit on the bottom. Just turn my card around so I can make sure I get the brush right into that edge there. Okay, that's very pretty isn't it? Now I'm just going to have to make sure I put that to one side to dry for a few minutes and put my pot there so I don't knock it over while I do the background piece. Now you can see I put a tiny amount on this palette and I've still got heaps. I could make another two or three cards out of what I've got there. So you really don't need to take a lot out to use. So we'll save that because I'll use that for blending with something else as we go along with other clips today. Right, let's get our back, while that dries, let's get our background card in. So on this, I first want to put the Merry Christmas in. 
and we're still going to stick with Versamark and Perfect Pearls. So I'll ink up my Merry Christmas. So this is, I find in the vertical stamps that the block lettering works really well. It stays very readable. So I want this to go along this edge of the card. So I'm just checking them about equal top and bottom to the card and I'm leaving a little bit of a border of black and hopefully I'm fairly straight. Place it down, a little bit of a press and I'm pretty happy where that's sitting. So I'm just going to grab a brush and pick up some of this Sunflower Sparkle and just dust it over these letters. have a little bit of a fluffier brush just to sort of massage that in and can you believe it I think I've actually sat down at my work table without that with me so I may have to just use the one that I've got so let's just clean that off and just rub that over now that'll tie in nicely with the gold that we put the tiny bits of gold that we put on our picture. I'm just dusting off any excess gold there because I don't want gold coming in with the rest of the colours that we're going to use. So let's now open up our other little pots. Our iris, blue hydrangea, zinnia, and the poppy. And our stamp now that we're going to use is the Desiderata text. Now with this stamp, if you're wondering which way around the text goes, the author of the poem is just written down the very bottom part there. So when you're looking at it as a whole stamp, the, the end that has the little bit at the bottom, that's up the right way. It looks very obvious when you're looking at it on the packaging like that, but when you're looking at your stamp, it can be a different matter to try and work out what's up and what's down. Now, if I was going to be stamping with a colour, that'd be fine. I could stamp it and stamp it off on my scrap paper, but I'm using Versamark. So I'm just looking that I've got it in my hand the right way. And we're going to stamp some text around our card. Now, I don't necessarily want all of it going straight across, so I'm going to put some on angles. Some can be a little bit patchy, some can be quite strong. Let's go that way. And we will do a touch on the other side of the Merry Christmas. little bit more just down there. Okay, now let's get our pearls on and see what we've made. Because it looks so nothing like that. But as we pick up some colours, and we're just going to dot them randomly around the card. It's gorgeous working with the pearls. You use such a tiny amount of them to create such a magical effect. Must make sure I don't forget to do that bottom edge. Okay, just clean my brush off a bit. Head into some of the zinnia green. Start to fill in some of the gaps. And then finally the poppy. I 
So I'm hoping that by not putting gold in amongst these colors, it means that our gold for our text is gonna stand out more. And I'm just going to position this a little bit over there so I can see that I have created enough of a border. And it shows me that I do want to cover those letters a little bit. So let's bring some blue in there. And some of our iris, move that out a bit more wider there. Okay, still got a few little spots that aren't covered. Right, now I'm going to start massaging it. So your Versamark stays dry for a little while, so you've got time to do the effects. I'm working mainly on the blue and green areas at the moment. And then I'll come back and do the poppy and the iris after giving my brush a bit of a clean. Just so that I'm not wiping green all over the other colours. Okay, give myself a bit of a clean. And let's come in. We would be a little bit stuck if we found that there was an area that we really would have liked some colour and we haven't got it. But we could possibly sneak in with the edge of the stamp if we needed to add a bit more in. Okay, that's looking pretty well covered. So I'm just going to grab my cloth and give that a wipe off. Now you could spray that with a sealer spray or a hairspray. I've found that I never have to. A lot of my pieces I've created like this and I've carried them around as samples for years and they, they're fine, it doesn't rub off. But if you choose to, you can spray I said, a bit of hairspray or sealer spray over the top. So I'm hoping you can see that lovely background with all its metallic shine showing up. Very pretty. Now I'm just going to position this before I stick anything down. I'm going to position this over the top and think, does it need anything else? And I think that's a yes. I think we need an edge on this card. Now to do that, I'm actually going to edge it with the Versamark. And just the same as when we're swiping colour around the edge of a card, just sw swipe across it. But this time I'm swiping with Versamark rather than a colour. And it's then going to pick up on some of the pearls. I could emboss it. Could do some black embossing around there. Actually, now I'm thinking that would look really good. <laughs> I have a plan when I start things, and sometimes I even make samples to start with. Other times I just have a plan and then change my mind halfway through the woods. Okay, let's emboss it in black. So I'm just gonna press that into my black embossing powder. If I don't like it, I can always add some pearls as well, Matthew. Stop smiling over there. No, I'm, I'm lying. You don't have to stop smiling. It's all good. I'm allowed to have a happy cameraman, even if it's at my expense. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna just concentrate on the edges because I don't want to heat the bits that we've done in the middle there already. So as soon as it starts to go shiny and smooth, move on to your next bit. Okay. Now let's have a look. Ah, oh, that's better. That just lifts it off the background. I didn't want to introduce another coloured border. If I added something like a metallic gold or something, it would just take away from our Perfect Pearls gold. So by just adding just that little bit of an edge with the black embossing, it gives the border, the card a border to stand out, but without conflicting with any of the other lovely work that we've done. So let's grab our double-sided tape and we're going to tape that down to our main card. Anything where you've been embossing and watercolouring, it can be 
a bit inclined to buckle your card so a bit of tape in the middle is going to help hold that down This is such a pretty card. Perfect pearls are lovely to play with. Now I'm thinking what else might I do where I can play with those pearls that I've already got on the palette? Hmm, maybe a Christmas candle or something. That's got me thinking. Okay, let's position our card and make sure we've got our border pretty right top to bottom. Now I'm not looking for the side for the border to be the same here as there. What I'm looking for is to have about equal between this edge and the lettering and that edge and the lettering. So that's what I'm aiming for. Pop it down and there we go. I'm just going to move this out of the way so you're not looking at a messy bit of paper there. You're instead looking at a messy craft mat. Woohoo! <laughs> no, I think that is so pretty. Black on black is a lovely technique and works really well for Christmas things. And you can imagine all sorts of different patterns that you could use around the edge. I like the Desiderata because it's fine, but it's got enough stamp to it that it's picked up on plenty of the pearls. Our leaf swirl would also work really well, um, as would our, we've got a music background stamp that work, would work lovely as well. Okay, so hopefully that gives you some ideas of playing with black card and the beautiful Perfect Pearls. Thank you for joining us for this one. We'll hopefully see you for another video soon. And um, yeah, thanks for watching.